Honorable Justice Madan Lokur, Honorable Acting Chief Justice Geeta Mittal, my fellow panelists, distinguished lawyers present here. Let me first of all congratulate Priyanka and her team in the Manupatra Law Skills Project for having initiated something which was a felt need for a long, long time in the legal profession. I remember about 20 years ago, the Bar Association of India and the Bar Council of India have jointly organized 40 years of the Advocates Act, four-day conference in Goa. I have the proceedings of that conference, and all of them, the Bar Council of India and the Bar Association of India, along with the law minister who was present there, the Attorney General and others, have agreed that continuing education must be mandatory for lawyers and have passed a, a resolution. I have the copy of the resolution. And the Bar Council of India in its later meeting has endorsed the, re the recommendation and wanted to take steps to institutionalize it. This is in the year 2001. And we are still talking about the need for continuing education being organized for advocates. Today's world, there is no profession that I know of, including the teaching profession, which can really do competent services unless their knowledge, skills, attitudes, ethics, are constantly replenished according to the changing needs. I take note of the fact that uh, Justice Lokur mentioned that Manupatra will be well advised to take note of the social relevance of the, or the social responsibilities of the legal profession and inculcate it in their uh, programs. If you were to look into what was adopted, and I want to make four points in my remarks. One is about continuing legal education, which I think in the next couple of years will become mandatory for new entrants to the bar. Because it is acknowledged universally that however much you can improve the quality of legal education in the law schools, you would not be able to produce a practice-ready advocate with a LLB degree because of the constraints in the academic learning of law. I remember there used to be a law school in America teaching from day one only through clinical programs the legal education, which was acknowledged, which is uh, accepted and accredited by the American Bar Association. This is the Howard Law School near Washington, D.C. Four years only doing and learning, no lectures. We remember that the Bharat Law, that was not through lectures or education in an educational institution that lawyers were being made. It was just like carpenters learn carpentry, lawyers learn lawyering. In other words, lawyering is a bundle of skills and knowledge is just supplementary. It can be acquired depending upon the facts of the case, what knowledge you require of law. Anybody even without a formal education. Whereas application of that knowledge which constitute the skill sets, that is something to be learned. Unfortunately, we all know that when the Advocates Act was passed in 1961, one year's compulsory apprenticeship with a senior advocate and a bar examination, which was a very rigorous program, that was there. It continued for two years. Then the law students went on strike. And uh, I mean, they threw stones at the law minister's residence. I was teaching in Delhi University at that time. And I f felt that uh, the then law minister, which is my namesake, Govinda Menon, he said, if you don't want it, uh, we don't care, and uh, the Advocates Act was amended, dispensing with that one-year internship. And the Bar Council was quick to dispense the bar examination also. So much so 
a law degree, however obtained, is good enough to enter into the profession. That led to the decline of the quality of legal services in the country till the time when the National Law School and the five-year integrated LLB program was con conceived. And as it was mentioned, that was a breakthrough. But even the five-year course with the, all the resources it commands, and it's a residential program, five years the student is with you. And whatever you can teach, you can well teach them during those five-year periods. It's a formative period, and it's a residential program. Therefore, even with the best of resources, the National Law School is unable to provide, as they call a practice-ready advocate. So we recognize the fact that a law graduate to be able to transform into a practicing lawyer requires application of skills. And what skills are required depend upon what type of lawyering you want to do. And we know today that lawyering is a very diversified profession. It's not merely litigation. We want to reduce litigation. Which law school teaches negotiation and mediation today? As a training program, if you want mediators to be trained, can mediators be trained with 40 hours of program? An advocate who is working in an adversarial setting, can he change the attitudes and skills and become a mediator with 40 hours of training? I believe that we need a separate bar for mediators if Section 89 CPC were to be meaningfully implemented. So also arbitrators. In other words, the legal profession is getting diversified and dispute settlement is not the only function of the legal profession. The public policy implications which Justice Lokur mentioned about needs to be emphasized in whichever, in the process of uh, dispute resolution. So what I'm trying to tell you is that the concept of continuing education is long back accepted. Two and a half years ago, when the Bar Council of Kerala set up the Institute, the Academy for Advocates, the MK Nambiar Academy for Advocates, which I am presently heading, it was uh, inaugurated by the then Chief Justice of India. At that time, having seen one of the programs which we conducted for young lawyers, the Chairman Bar Council of India requested me to prepare a set of rules which the Bar Council can adopt which makes every new entrant to the bar to undergo that induction training. As it was mentioned, how do you gather facts? How do you prove? How do you conduct an examination in chief or a cross-examination? How do you identify the issues? How do you read a case as it was mentioned by Justice Gita Mittal? Reading a case and understanding the ratio and finding the limitations of it, distinguishing it from a similar case, etc. These are skills, and these are skill sets. And the most essential skill of communication, language and communication, interviewing and counseling, appreciation of evidence, settlement of issues, which are essential, drafting and pleading, as we say, these are not practiced by the law student while he or she is in the law school, partly because the teachers are not equipped to teach that, because they are full-time teachers and they are not practitioners. And if practitioners are inducted in the law school, they come and give a few lectures and go, and they don't have the time to really teach the skills. So however you try to create a professional legal education institution, you will not be able to give all the skill set that are essential today to be able to survive as a professional lawyer. So induction training is a must, and the Bar Council, I believe, in the next couple of years will make it compulsory, if necessary, after an am amendment of the Advocates Act, because the profession otherwise has a very bleak future. The second important thing, as it was mentioned here, is Continuing education, after having become a lawyer and you have the basic, basic competencies, how do you improve, update your knowledge and skills, and to be able to acquire better skills, and to go into new areas of lawyering? That is continuing education, which I don't want to read out, but this is two resolutions. One is saying that lawyers will have to re-register every five years. 
This was what was adopted by not only the Bar Council and the Bar Association of India, the Parliament, the 10th uh, Lok, Sabha, Lok Sabha Committee on Subordinate Legislation has recorded that lawyers will have to re-register every, every five years and re-registration will be conditional upon X number of hours of continuing education. These are policy-wise accepted by every stakeholder, the parliament as well as the bar. But the government has not acted on it. The Bar Council did not pursue it. Bar Association also ignored it. Now we are talking about and Manupatra therefore has stepped in. A private player has come in to make a professional need uh, started off. Otherwise, the government and the Bar Council, so Bar Council will come and I'm sure that the Manupatra will be commissioned by the Bar Council to make it an All India uh, program. A third type of uh, continuing education is specialization and super specialization. For example, if a lawyer, even in the Supreme Court, if he were to argue a competition commission case, do you think that he can just argue like that? Or a matter relating to 2G spectrum. I have seen a senior advocate at the Supreme Court refusing to take the case because he has to devote considerable time to be able to understand the telecommunication law, both its technology aspects as well as administrative aspects. IPR, of course, is now common practice, but energy law, if you were to argue a matter relating to nuclear li liability issue, can an ordinary lawyer, however experienced he be, he will do it because he gets his fees, but will he be able to do it competently? That's why technology experts are being inducted. What's the Green Tribunal about? Is it because the Supreme Court judges are unable to address the complicated issues of environment and ecological issues. So I created a special tribunal and have induction of people. Today, best, some of the best arbitrators are from among engineers, from managers, not from lawyers. More and more of our profession are being taken over by other professionals because we lack that competency to be able to put in both by way of knowledge as well as by way of skills. So specialization and super specialization will become a necessity to be able to be competitive in the profession, particularly in a globalized environment. And that is the third type of uh, continuing legal education. To be able to give these things, and that's my next point, we need to distinguish between education and training. Education is about imparting knowledge not the information only, but digested information is knowledge. That, of course, will be relatively easier. Even a law college will be able to give that. But when it comes to training, which is basically application of that knowledge to address and resolve problems, you need to have trainers. Where are the trainers? Even in judicial academies. I don't know of any single trainer in any judicial academy, including the National Judicial Academy, who is competent to be a trainer of judges. You can either have uh, law teachers or retired judges or lawyers. They will come and lecture and some knowledge will be imparted. Education can be given, but training, no. Hands-on training, experiential training, under the guidance of supervised, a person who is competent to give that. Therefore, if you were to distinguish training from education, both must go side by side. You need perhaps the online. Technology will be of great support in that regard because you can commit errors and correct errors. You know, you know, when we were trying to impart this moot court training for advocacy, we used to have it videotaped and then play it back and show to the student as to how he or she has not been able to put through or respond to a question from the bench, particularly in cross-examination. When we teach, we videotape the whole thing and play back whether you should have asked this question at this point of time, whether another question would have taken you to a different line, which will be advantageous to you. This is a method whereby technology is used to be able to learn 
partly by self-study and partly by assistance of... Uh, so what I like to submit in this regard is distinguish education from training, and this Manupatra's program is going to be of great help for a law teacher in a law school. While the student is in the law college, in the third year, fourth year, whatever, will be able to use this uh, program while teaching evidence, while teaching civil procedure, while teaching criminal procedure, as a, and supplement that with whatever lectures that you have. So this is not going to be a program which will be for people who have already come into the profession. But people who are studying law in the law colleges can profitably use these programs to be able to understand if you cannot give uh, hands-on experience while in the law college, there will be very little that you can do once they go out. Finally, I would like to submit, as I found, more and more lawyers are going to corporate practice, transactional lawyering, very good. It has helped the economy a great deal. They are doing a lot of financial work today, management work today. So the opportunities for law graduates have grown so much since 1990s. That is to be welcomed. People who are going to litigation and adjudication, they are, particularly from the good law schools, they are going to the High Court and the Supreme Court. Very few, maybe less than 10% of the graduates of the good five-year program are going to trial court, where we know 90% of our litigants get justice. Why are they not able to survive in the trial? Some of them have gone and returned, saying they cannot. There are many reasons. I don't want to explain all of them. But I suggested a model whereby they can form a, 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 a partnership of these new graduates to make an impact in the trial court, particularly in the district court. They need to be assisted. There are no senior lawyers in the trial courts who are prepared to help the juniors to come up. Many of them are telling the juniors that the bar is overcrowded, you go and do something else. Given that sort of a situation, you need some program sponsored preferably by the Bar Council, whereby the startups in the profession can be assisted, particularly with technology, with uh, organizational assistance, and with the, with the know-how that makes successful legal practice, uh, honest legal practice. I suppose this program can be led to developing that because we need more and more lawyers. Even today, according to one estimate, only 22 to 25 percent of Indian population have anything to do with courts in India. Not that uh, the majority of the population have no legal problems. They are going perhaps to cup panchayats or somewhere else. Public interest litigation tried to address some of those issues. So it is not giving a lawyer to everybody in need. It's a question of organizing the legal profession or legal services in such a manner that it is spread to all across the country wherever people live. Maybe tribals, rural areas. Why are farmers committing suicide? Have lawyers a role on it? I say yes. Lawyers are also responsible for farmers' suicide in this country. For children dying in malnutrition in the country, lawyers are responsible for disasters like the Bhopal disaster, for so many things, ills in governance, lawyers are responsible. But lawyers do not understand that justice is justice, social, economic, and political, and not justice in resolving one dispute. The public interest dimension of dispute resolution is not appreciated by lawyers. How do you inculcate that? Otherwise, you will be producing a technician by skills training. So you need a larger goal of continuing education. It must be institutionalized. It must be competently organized by the bar, the bench, and the academia with government support. Legal aid will assume a different role. Mediation will assume the center stage in dispute resolution. 
and adjudication will be reserved for very complex cases only. That is what is necessary if the problems of access to justice in India need to be addressed. Therefore, let me just conclude. I am one of the panelists also, so I will get some more time to express my additional points. I don't want, therefore, to continue. I will be joining the panelists for uh, giving some basic things. How to give, therefore, a meaningful continuing education. Manupatra in partnership with the law schools, in partnership with bar associations. That is the agenda, which is a national agenda. And Manupatra has taken this national cause for maximizing justice in society. I once again congratulate them. Thank you very much.